Well, good evening and welcome back to Monster Movie Night here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. I am your internet horror host and creepy old curator, Bobby Gamonster. Along with my pal and co-host, Boris the Buzzard. We thank you, one and all, for entering our abode, our museum of artifacts, of horror, monstrosities, and much, much more. <laughs> Tonight's feature is a wonderful film called White Pongo. It's about a white ape, gorilla, in fact, that's being hunted by unscrupulous men through the jungles, and just because it's different, and it's rare, and it's, what did they say, half human? Well, we won't hold that against it, will we now? Tonight's feature is in honor, or in lieu, of a tragedy that happened this past week at a zoo. A gorilla was killed. Um, some people think that it was a travesty. Some people think that it was meant to be. There was a child involved. You know the story. I'm not going to rehash it, but... For that poor gorilla that lost its life, and for all the many gorillas out there that are losing their battle with becoming extinct, we're showing this film in hopes that people will rally around and help save our wild gorillas, which are very few, and, and in fact, We'll bring out some exhibits tonight that uh, show that exactly that. Let's, let's start with this one here. Everyone knows this fellow here, King Kong, the gross, most famous gorilla of all. Let me get this a little closer to you. And, yes, that's better. Anyway, this was a nice box set that we have here at the museum. And, of course, we know the story of King Kong very well. He lost his life as well due to facts that uh, people didn't quite understand him. No, he, they brought him to be uh, uh, something of an oddity to be shown. Brought him from his homeland where he was safe and doing well. And, well, we know the story. Well, this is kind of like that story that happened in the news. Right, Boris? Exactly. So, let us go to... White Pongo. <laughs> north and south of the equator in West Africa are vast areas of dense forests and swamplands as yet unexplored by white men. A virgin territory penetrated only by the great Congo River and its tributaries. Here in this wild, steaming portion of the dark continent is the home of the Ponga, native name for the gorilla. It was here on the fringe of gorilla territory in a nameless native village inhabited by a tribe of fierce Negritos, an incident occurred which was destined to startle the civilized world.
bring back to civilization the precious diary of Dr. Deirdre. Give you my word of honor. You must succeed. For if you don't, the most astounding anthropological discovery of the ages will be lost to the world, and I will have lived in vain. I don't do so now, don't worry. Why don't you escape with me? The glory of such a discovery should go to you. Ten years ago, I might have attempted it. But now it's too late. You are still young enough to have a fighting chance. Now, follow my instructions, my friend, and good luck to you. He's just too weak to fight jungle fever. I don't know how he managed to travel as far as he did. Do you think you can keep him alive till Sir Harry arrives? I expect him any day. I don't know, Van. I'm doing everything I can. I know you are, but... But if Sir Harry could only hear the astonishing things he said, it would mean so much. The man is delirious. You don't actually believe he saw a white girl, do you? Oh, yes, I do. It's the fever. No, Doc. There must be some truth behind the stories those hunters brought back from the interior. About a white girl attacking a native? Yes, sir. Poppycock. Some drunken trader probably saw it coming out of a bottle of bourbon. That's what I thought. Until Kundalini showed up. 
Wait till Sir Harry arrives and I let you in on an amazing discovery. Come in. Oh. Both gone. That must be Sir Harry. Keep a close watch on our patients. Right, oh, but you better hurry. We haven't much time. discovery of the century. Would you mind coming along right away? Let's go. Let's attend to the unloading. Immediately, sir. Come, Pam. Pam. Miss Pamela. How do you do? 
pleasure of mine, Fräulein. My secretary, Cargo. How do you do, sir? And Baxter. Hello. Hello. Now, Hans, if you'll point out our canoes, we'll store our luggage aboard. Put the pet on. Put the pet on here. Put the pet on. Come away. Here's the boss man. Number one boss man. Savvy? Savvy. Me, number one porter boy. You show boss man to canoe. Don't Follow number one porter boy. Number one porter boy. You will follow me, I will show you to your canoe.
back in through the jungle, we come to a trail over the mountains that'll save us over 150 miles of water transport. By Jove, that'll save a lot of time, too. Nice going, Hans. You've been over that trail before, Hans? Twice, sir. Now, about here, we come to a point...
about the old white man who gave the diary to come. I'm afraid that wouldn't be wise, my dear. It might make them more suspicious of us than they are. So what do you propose? I'll ask the chief if he'll allow us to camp here for a few days to rest and do some trading. And if the old white man is still here, he'll seek us. Quite right, Han. We bow to your better judgment. Guadalajara, for a combo, a la plage, la foto ba. Bossa, que me capisse me dar vida. Of course, the man with you. Chief says we can stay here long enough to do some trading, but we can't camp in the village. Not so slow, devil, isn't it? Well, I can't say I blame the old boy. He probably had good reason for it. Have the porters break out some of the cotton goods and trinkets. Yes, sir. Mumbo Jumbo, coming me. For a cooler, the latage, the tumbaga. Come into the door. Let me I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, not at all. Quite all right. 
My name doesn't matter. I was the anthropologist who accompanied the ill-fated Deodorf expedition. Uh, uh, anyhow, Deodorf was my friend, and I stuck by him after the others had deserted, and I was a witness to his murder by the missing link. Doctor, we are very anxious to know what you have in this bag. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I was going to show you some photos I made. I was afraid to entrust them to Gunderson. Now, yeah. now that is Dr. Frederick Theodore. In my opinion, one of the world's greatest anthropologists. And they are the members of the expedition with a portion of our permanent camp in Gorilla Territory. Do you suppose there's any part of their camp still standing? Hardly. After 10 years, it was a constant fight then to keep the jungle out. These photographs are priceless, Doctor. We'll guard them with our lives. Well, there are others there showing the missing link reacting to some intelligent tests we made, which you can study at your leisure. But this one shows him full grown at five years, just a few weeks before he broke out of his cage and murdered Theodore. We are deeply indebted to you, Doctor. Isn't there something we can do for you in return? Perhaps on our return, you'd like to go back to civilization with us. No, I'd rather not. My life on this earth is growing short, and my mission, if you can call it such, is about finished. Now, uh, this map will guide you to Deirdre's camp, and I'd advise you to rebuild it and use it as base of all future activity. Otherwise, you may traverse the entire length and breadth of the Congo and never catch sight of a single gorilla. I assume from your suggestion that Dr. Theodore used some methods to lure the gorillas into his camp. <laughs> his method was quite simple. He discovered that the medium plant was a choice food for the gorilla. And so he planted it all around his camp. Uh, you find some photos of the medium in those. Here you are, Mother. If you don't want it for a commoda, you could use it for bathroom too. I don't know about this the clever, but keep the right one.
and some snacks about 40 weeks. I'll gladly keep watch. I'm not tired. I've used the long watch. Change your mind. Somebody still has enthusiasm. I'm afraid I lost mine crossing that swamp. Very well, Han. Let's camp here. That's a good rest to give my morale a little. <laughs> My, my, so far this film has become so action-packed, don't you think? <laughs> indeed, indeed. Here at uh, the museum, we have all sorts of attractions. And for tonight's film, for the preservation of gorillas and the advancement of those people who wear the suits of gorillas pretending to be in movies of ages past, we have brought out our gorilla outfit, or uh, Congo here. He, uh, he's been here for many, many years. Isn't that right, Boris? Exactly. He's, he's needing a little bit of pruning, a little bit of uh, 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 attire assessments here, you know, getting, uh, picking some of the bugs out. Boris enjoys doing that from time to time, right? Exactly. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope you're enjoying the movie so far, and I hope you have enjoyed seeing some of the exhibits and artifacts here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. Located in the foothills of Virginia, go to our website, uh, www.monstermovienight.com. Take a little look at uh, some of the sections. I think it's called Our World. You might be surprised what you might find and see. And of course, if you want to see the real thing, come on by, give us a call, make an appointment. We'll be glad to fit you in, won't we, Boris? We're always looking out for new blood. <laughs> Let's go back to White Pongo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Kincaid. Good going, Bishop. This must be the spot. The no, all we've got to do is plant medium all around the place and onto the cover. Yes, and pray for the white gorilla to get hungry, huh? If it works for Dr. Theodore, it will work for us. In spite of your skepticism. I'm very joking. How do we know if the trap is sprung if we're inside the stockade? By means of a slight improvement by Baxter over the Deodore. Baxter? Yes, Baxter. Oh, Baxter. Yes, Baxter. Yes, Baxter. Now, you see that there bell up there? Now, just by way of a demonstration, if you'll all step aside, we'll show you how it goes. First, we hook this in here. Now, Miss Pamela, here's your gorilla. <laughs> Comes in only gets a whiff of the men's job. <laughs> <laughs> so we up to the windfall to wet his appetite. <laughs> and being a greedy blinder, eats his way right up to the trap. <laughs> well, there's a whole bunch of it out in the center. So, he steps right out there to see what he can do about it. <laughs> now, you see how it works, Miss Pamela? It looks like the Baxter invention is a blooming success. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for making a blasted monkey me. <laughs> Good friend. What do you say? Well, what can I say? 
Good night, Tony. Good
Good evening, Miss Mason. I did intend to disturb you. Please sit down. After you, ma'am. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Why should anyone observe the social life that is here? This is civilization. The jungle. A man shouldn't forget to pay his respects to a charming lady even in the jungle, Miss Rex. It's only a reminder that I'm not easy. Stop addressing me as Miss Bragdon. I'm Pamela and What's going on here? Answer me, Bishop. Why didn't you strike Carswell? I'm sorry, sir. I must have lost my temper. Go on. Why don't you tell him? Why don't you tell him how I found her in your arms and you were kissing her? I resent such presumption, Bishop. You were engaged as a rifleman, not to make love to my daughter. I must have lost my head. I'm sorry, sir. You've lost my confidence and respect. If it were possible, I'd send you back to Mojave. But, Father, it was all my fault. I... I'll talk to you later. Go to your room. But, Father... Pamela, in the morning, I shall appoint a more trustworthy guard for my daughter. And if you so much as speak to her again, I'll have you put under arrest. Understand? Yes, sir. By Jove, we've captured her! Oh, I could not do white one. I'm satisfied the trap works. That gives me hope. What are you going to do with it? Shoot it? Don't be an idiot. If we kill him, all our efforts will be wasted. We'll never have another gorilla come near the place. Baxter, put the ladder down for him. Right, sir. We'll give him a chance to get out. Talk to you, Hans. What's on your mind? Well, I'm fed up with this. I'm sick of wasting my time trying to find a white monkey. So? You tell me that you had a definite purpose in joining this expedition. Supposing I have? Well, I'd, I'd like to throw in with you if there's a chance. Without knowing my objective? Well, anything would be better than this. If you throw in with us, there can be no backing out, understand? And if we fail... You'll risk being hanged with the rest of us. Well? I'll do anything if I can take Pamela with me. Oh, I don't know about that. I hadn't figured on taking a woman along. Suppose she objects to going with you. Well, suppose the Harry objects to your plans. That isn't going to stop you, is it? You can take her, but she'll be your responsibility. All right. Good, I can tell you our plans now. I know where there's a fabulous gold field. And by borrowing Herr Bragdon's safari, we can bring out enough of the shiny metal to make us richer than the Bank of England. I'm with you all the way. Come with me. This is an outrage. I shall spend every penny I possess to prosecute you, criminal. Out north will now be then, Sir Harry. It's best to bargain with the blighters. Carswell, I would never have thought you'd be an accessory to this criminal venture. You must be mad. Shut up. Tie them up. Mumbo Jumbo. Maraco Tumba. Maraganga. Now go to the rear. Take them as much as you 
Europa. My friends, we are taking all the guns and supplies with us. But if you make no attempt to follow, we will leave a cache on the riverbank a two-day trek from here. With care, it will be sufficient to get you back to Mojave. But if you attempt to follow, we will leave nothing. Come on, Pam, you're coming with us. Oh, no, I'm not. How dare you, you insolent young bounder. Don't be a fool, Carswell. Your horse going to get your blue and neck scratched. You coming, Pam? No, I'm not. All right, Mumbo Jumbo. Bring the Fräulein with us. What man said, come you? Don't you dare touch me. Araka has to go now. Take a look at the back of the ship. Araka has to go now. Araka has to go now. Where is the place we are? Show, boy. Now, if we only had some guns, we could take off to the blinders and turn the tables on them. If we only had some cartridges. Perhaps we'll soon have both. Sure, Kruger is going to leave them for us on the riverbank. You didn't really believe that, did you? Didn't you? My dear fellow, Kruger can't possibly afford for us to get out of here alive. Do you really mean he is cold-blooded enough to leave us stranded without food or guns? It wouldn't be the first time, Van Doren. You seem to know quite a bit about her, Kruger. It's part of my job. I'm afraid I'm not quite what I seem. You see, I joined your safari under orders from the Rhodesian Secret Service. About 18 months ago, the bodies of a party of prospectors were found in the bush. Each man shot through the head. We discovered they had hired a guide. The guide's body wasn't there. I can only tell you, gentlemen, that the description of the guide fits Kroger very well. Further, it was established there were two other members of the original party, riflemen, hired by the same guide. Their bodies weren't there either. Webman Stringer very possible. Yes, but what are we going to do for guns and supplies? I've taken care of that. Bishop, I owe you an apology. There isn't time for that now. Every minute that Pamela's with Kroger, she's in danger. If you'll take command, we'll follow you. Good enough. Come on.
All aboard. But you promised to leave food and guns on the bank for Father and the others. I've changed my mind, Fräulein. But you've got to. If you don't, they'll starve to death. It's either their lives or mine, Fräulein, and I believe in self-preservation. Clive, you can't let him do this. It's the same as murder. She's right. It would be murder. You've got to give them a fighting chance. Shut up. I want any advice from you. I'll ask for it. I'll get aboard, both of you. Come! You've got to learn to obey them. Now get up, Fräulein. I have no more time to waste. killed by a huge gorilla who was holding Miss Bragdon in his arms. And he was a white gorilla.
I look like some lion found COVID spotted during the night. Yes. Come on, everybody! Gorilla tracks. From now on, we'll have to be careful not to overlook any sign. We'll probably find lots of those tracks, but the deeper ones we'll have to follow. The white gorilla was carrying over 100 pounds of extra weight. Come on. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
certainly hope his disposition improves. He doesn't seem at all pleased with the fame that's coming his way. Bye-bye. And we have gathered enough engine to feed him for a year. Well, I can hardly wait until we get back to London. I know a couple of anthropologists who will get the surprise of their lives when we exhibit him. Do you really think he's a missing link between man and monkey? I am convinced that he is. In the few tests we've been able to make, he has shown a much higher intelligence quotient than any other ape we've ever heard of. Well, whether he is or not, he's going to be the subject of controversy for the next 50 years. And his appearance will startle the world. <laughs> Ah, I see that you survived the film. I hope you enjoyed it. Wasn't it wonderful? That poor, poor gorilla. You know, a few years passed when I was just a lad, there actually was a rare albino white gorilla. His name was Snowflake. It was the sweetest little gorilla ever to be seen. I'm not sure what happened to that poor thing, but but uh, there was, I think there was actually two, maybe three, that was ever born and... Uh, maybe raised in captivity. I'm not sure the story, but uh, there really was a white pongo of sorts. <laughs> Again, we hope that we've helped uh, rouse some awareness for the gorilla trade, and of course, we send out heartfelt sorrow for the gorilla that lost its life, and of course, we were glad that the child was saved. But, you know how it goes. The monster usually wo loses the human usually wins, but not always. Not here at Monster Movie Night. Until next time, keep screaming.